Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joyce. I share content for Canada immigration, and I hope you are all doing well. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking. So um, today's video is going to be on Canada immigration, mainly on the news that are going around. Our minister, who is uh, Mark Miller, has um, spoken a few things concerning immigration, and I want to highlight for you, I want to give you my opinion concerning what is going to happen in Canada and who are going to be affected and who are not going to be affected in these uh, new uh, plans that have been laid by the immigration officer, immigration minister, sorry. So now, the thing is that our minister for immigration has said that uh, they want to increase the number of permanent resident issuance or the uh, uh, for the people who are already in Canada. This means that they want to increase um, the number of permanent residents given to the people who are already in Canada. What does this mean? Guys, remember we have got the main three streams that normally issue permanent residency for people who want to come to Canada, mainly the express entry, the provisional mini program, the, the rural program, and, and, and all those streams, there are many. So now, this is how he's reasoning, and I'll tell you whether I support him or not. So he's saying that there are so many um, temporary visa holders that are now inside Canada already, who do not have permanent resident, and a lot of them, majority of them are asylum seekers. And of course, an, another large number of international students who have got pro, uh, postgraduate work permit in Canada, and they're looking forward, of course, to getting PR. They're already in Canada. Canada has been going through challenges of housing. And a lot of people have been complaining. A lot of Canadians have been complaining about the issue of housing. Housing is a big, big challenge in Canada. And that is why initially they had said that they're going to put a cap on international students to reduce the number of international students coming, claiming that they want to reduce these numbers so that uh, they try to make housing better. By not bringing international students, housing would become better. Well, I didn't know how that one would work. But now they have sat again and discussed the same issue. And they have realized that even the number of people that come to Canada as visitors and then claim for asylum is a huge number that is causing the government to spend so much money. This started with the largest number of asylum seekers, according to them, are coming from Mexico. Mexico is one of the three countries that form northern, that form um, uh, um, the, 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 that forms the, what is it called? The three countries that form North America, it is Mexico, United States, and Canada. Of course, United States does not need immigration to Canada. Well, they are developed already, but Mexico is still struggling in terms of economy. And a lot of people from Mexico normally come to secure their life here in Canada to make their lives better. So, And a lot of them come to Canada with temporary visa. And once they come to Canada, they apply for asylum, and that's how they settle. A lot of them have been given the program for coming to work uh, in Canada as seasonal workers. That program has always been there for Mexicans to come and work as seasonal workers. And that one will still remain. But they, they are concerned about the high number of asylum seekers that have come to Canada in the last three years. And that large number is affecting the economy of Canada. Quebec, the minister of Quebec has raised complaints or has raised uh, complaints saying that his Quebec alone, Quebec is one of the provinces in Canada, that he said that Quebec alone is hosting 55% of the people that are seeking asylum in, Ken in Canada. And, and, and with that, he said that he's, he needs the government of Canada to reimburse the money that he has spent on the asylum seekers, which is about one billion. So he's claiming He's asking this money from the government of Canada that, wow, I have spent $1 billion on the on the Canada uh, asylum seekers who are currently living in Quebec, and I need to be reimbursed $1 billion Canadian dollars. Well, wow. 
that's a lot. I, I always thought that Ontario is the one that holds the largest number of asylum seekers, but according to him, he has 55% of asylum seekers living in Quebec. Well, that's a lot of money, guys. One billion for one province is a lot. Well, um, so the way he's, the minister is reasoning is that even you think about it, if a country or if it's you who is managing a country like Canada and you have got a lot of asylum seekers that have come to your country like in the last three years, so many of them, you know what normally with asylum seeker, when somebody goes to seek asylum in a country, that person does that person has given up life in their previous country and they are looking forward to becoming permanent resident and finally citizen of that country where they are going to seek asylum. So this is somebody who has decided that Canada is final. And for you as a minister, for you as immigration, you will consider this person more because they're already in your country. You're not going to spend any money, first of all, to bring, even though you're spending money to maintain them. The best way to handle this situation is to clear these people who are already in Canada as asylum seeker, which is a huge number, guys. Personally, I keep telling you, I have never seen a lot of asylum seekers in Canada like in the last three years. And, the, and a lot of them have been living in very good hotels, five-star hotel, sponsored by the government. You will not see this in any other country. Canada is the best, guys. Canada is the best. So because of that, what the minister is saying now, the reason why they are reducing the PR for people who are outside Canada is so that these people who are asylum seekers within Canada and also the international students who are already in Canada with postgraduate work permit, he's pleading with the express entry pool and also the PNP pool, asking them that why can't you absorb more of these asylum seekers and international students who are already in Canada so that once you give them the PR, these people will be out of the system. Because once you give somebody PR, that person feels entitlement, that person is able to integrate into the communities, and this person is able to start a life, start working, and start paying back taxes. So this is according to them. And I, and I also support this, because if they clear this batch that is, uh, is bringing a backlog in the shelters, uh, in the housing, these people will be will be able to work. These people will be able to work, support themselves, be able to bring their families because once they get paired, they'll also bring their family and they'll be able now to support themselves. He also said that um, the only people who will not be affected to come from outside Canada are healthcare workers. I know I've got a lot of nurses that follow me. He said that the healthcare workers they will increase maybe what they are going to do is to increase new programs for healthcare workers to come to Canada from outside Canada. Well, <laughs> this he said this, but according to me and what I have observed, nurses and healthcare workers, doctors have been frustrated for the longest time in Canada. Even though they say that they are going to bring them here, the, the truth is when they come here, getting into the system, getting the license is a long, tedious process that is so frustrating. And even the ones that we have on our social platforms trying to come to Canada, a lot of them have got the licenses to practice in Canada, a lot of them, but still they cannot have an immigration pathway. So if he's going to watch this video, the easiest thing is for him to say anyone who has a license to practice in Canada and they're outside Canada, they should have a special program to be able to enter Canada immediately and start practicing because these are healthcare workers. If COVID happens, God forbid, Canada, we are done. Anyway, he also said something else. He said that, um, so those who are inside Canada will benefit, will benefit a lot. Guys, I kept telling you that, come, 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 because when you're inside, things will work out, don't worry. Anyway, so now he has said, he has also said, he said something that, <laughs> it is as it is a suicidal measure to do this to give this PR to the asylum seekers who are already in Canada. He said it's an it's a suicidal measure. I heard him say that, but he also said that is also economically it makes a lot of sense. Economically, it is either even though it's a suicidal measure, economically it makes a lot of sense to give them PR to be able to integrate into the society. So. Um, the other thing he mentioned is about Mexicans. I, I, I said that. Um, and then he advised the PNP 
and the express entry pools to pick a lot of people who are already in, in Canada. So what is my advice for you who is already in Canada? Those of you that are internationally trained, uh, international student with work um, with postgraduate work permit and asylum seekers, enter in the pools. If you have got qualifications to enter in the pools, just enter. Let me tell you guys what happens. This is something that we have seen before. After COVID, what happened is that they, they, a lot of people that entered Canada through the, uh, the illegal route that was there between Canada and the, and the U.S., a lot of people were able to come from the U.S. A lot of people that were in the U.S. for many years without paperwork, they were able to enter Canada illegally. And that number was so huge. And what the government of Canada did in, did in my eyes, they gave them house, houses, they gave them jobs, they took them back to school, and they, they created a temporary pathway. They, actually, that uh, pathway was called a temporary pathway for healthcare workers. And they said, anyone that is in Canada and has done uh, PSW, which is CNA, which is healthcare, uh, healthcare assistant, anyone that has done a course in healthcare, um, nurse assistant, they were all given permanent resident. 99% of them were given permanent resident. It's going to be the same here, guys. If you're in Canada, the best thing you can do right now is to, is to grab an opportunity for training. Mm. Make sure that at least you have, um, my charger is dying. Make sure that at least you go into school have a program either in healthcare, that is PSW, or carpentry, or any of the trades. There's going to be programs that will start absorbing you people who are already in Canada with some of these programs. My charger is dying. Yeah, so that is actually what is going to happen. And um, I think it's a good move. I'm not willing to to redo this video and I'm not willing to edit it. So you'll eat it as it is. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so what are we saying? If you're in Canada, get something like training, make sure you do either PSW, carpentry, any of the electrician, um, plumbing, any of the trades or even healthcare courses. And then very soon, very soon, you will hear of a program that will come to absorb anybody that is in Canada and has a training from Canada and they'll get PR. They'll not just issue it like that. They don't normally do that. You cannot be in shelters, you cannot be in hotels sleeping there and just get a PR like that. It won't happen like that. Leave your comfort zone, go outside. They'll also look at your working experience. They'll check, oh, you came to Canada two years ago you haven't worked anywhere. So you are not helping us in any way. So they will say, if you have not worked, if you have not done anything in the last one year or in the last six months, they won't give you PR. So make sure you're doing something. Either you're working, you're reading, do something because this is what is going to absorb you. And it's also going to help a lot of people who are waiting to get their visas to come to Canada. What is going to happen for a lot of people who have applied for their visas and they haven't received any feedback? Do not worry. According to me, let me tell you, for any country, it is easier to manage temporary immigrants compared to permanent immigrants. And I'll tell you the reason. According to me and my observation, you know, I've been in Canada for long. Canada is not interested in professionals. Take this to the bank. Canada is interested in having more manual laborers. And that is why you find out that when a lot of professionals come to Canada, they stay for five years, 10 years before they get into their profession. Why? They want to, to spend a lot of your time doing manual work because they, this is where a lot of governments rely on manual labor. That is where a lot of, that is where their weight is. It's not, it's, it's not, it, that is not a priority to them. And they know that if somebody is coming to Canada seeking asylum as a temporary resident, that person has given up life back home. And they're willing to do any kind of job. And these are the people that the government needs. They are not interested. They have trained their own Canadians to do law, to practice, you know, these beautiful, beautiful jobs. They already have their own. Okay? 
And even the older Canadians here who are immigrants have also matured to become that. So right now, what they're straining, what they're struggling in is manual workers. Well, if you can work in the warehouse, if you can work in the farm, those are the people that this government need at this at any point, not just Canada, any country. And that's why you realize that even in the US, they will never kill the green card rotary. It, they can never kill it. Why? Because they know majority of people that apply green card, when they go to the US, initially for the, maybe for like 10, 5 to 10 years before they stabilize, they'll be doing manual work. And that's why before, they, they just used to accept you if you only have, I think, high school. Just basic high school. Why do you think they are not asking for PhD? It's because they don't need that PhD so much as they need the, the high school. Because high school, you're young, you're vibrant, you do not have a lot of professionalism. You can enter in a warehouse and start working and start paying taxes. That is what is their interest at the moment. So do not lose hope. Those of you that are still uh, uh, in the process of applying for your visitor visa, I did this visitor visa in the last two years and people fought me like, Joyce, you want people to come to Canada and there are no jobs. Visitor visa is a week. It's the weakest visa that you can get for Canada. But look at it now. It's shining all the way. Anyway, let's go, guys. Do it and keep shining. See you in the next video. Any information that I share here is just my opinion. My opinion. P -p primary, primarily, it's my, purely my opinion is not any legal advice. In case you need a lawyer, please find one and seek legal advice. Okay? See you in the next one. Bye-bye.